Well, hi there. I'm Sandy Almock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube. And I'm going to make a Feeling Foxy card. That's the name of the stamp set, Feeling Foxy. I don't know that I'm feeling foxy today, but he has these really cute little foxes on them. I'm just going to use one of them along with some of the hearts to make a little teeny tiny vignette scene. I have it stamped onto some cold press watercolor paper by Arches using Versa Fine ink so that I can do some watercoloring with it. So you need a waterproof ink. And I'm starting off by using some Daniel Smith sap green paint in order to make the background. The reason for that is because I don't like any of the greens really for a background like this that are in the Zig Clean color set, which is what I'm going to color my foxes and my flowers with. But I do love my sap green. So you may have noticed in my videos I use a lot of sap green because I love that color for any kind of a grass, forest, that kind of a scene. And I wanted to just have a little halo of green and then some leaves in and among that. And I'm going to use the flowers or the, the hearts as flowers in my little scene. But I'm painting right up to the edge of the stamp and then using water as I get out to the edges to soften that out. And that's going to give me that little vignette look, but I am going to paint over top of it. So if you do this stage and you still get some bloops or that kind of thing, then you can certainly add to it later as we get into the final step. But I'm also painting the background first because I tried doing the Zig Clean Color work first in the last version I did before I filmed this one. And I had a problem because that Zig Clean Color, if it gets all the way to like over top of the ink on the edge of that stamp line, then you can too easily pull it into the green on the, the water portion. It's way too easy to make that mistake because the zigs, like they never really set, even though they're dry, they don't really set super well. So the instant you hit them with water, they start moving again. The sap green is going to be a little more stable because it's watercolor as opposed to whatever is in these markers, whatever kind of pigment that is. But I'm using three colors for my fox and I have a little, it's a, like just a plastic lid for a water bottle that I have a little bit of water in. So I can dip just a little bit of it and make a slightly lighter yellow. And I've done this before sometimes to make my markers last a little bit longer because there's more pigment in that marker than I can get out of the brush sometimes, but I can pull a little bit more out if I just wet that end just slightly. And it also serves to make a lighter shade of the particular color. But these zigs work really nicely in blending with each other for the most part. I can get all kinds of crazy colors to blend together that don't necessarily belong together because they really do work pretty well. Some of them will make mud as they get moving along and some of the colors change color as you add water to them. So you have to practice whatever color combinations you want to use. And I save all of my little scraps. If you use a 9 by 12 pad like I do, you end up with like a long strip here and there when you're cutting things down for card size. And I save all those little strips and I do all my practicing on those. So a little bonus tip for you. And here I'm just adding a little bit of water to get some of the, the bottom of the fox to melt out a little bit more. And I wanted to use a couple different colors for my hearts, which will actually be flowers. So I'm using a red at the base of both of them, or all of them, and then some of them are gonna have yellow to pull that color in so they'll have a little different color to the flower itself and some will be using that pink. And now once that's all dry I jump back in with my sap green. I'm using a little bit of it on my palette there to be able to have it close at hand. But you know rinsing out my brush though because I want I wanted this to be lighter. That one on the left is going to be a problem ongoing because it's just darker than I wanted. So you'll see me fight that one a little bit but I'll, I'll keep kind of working on different areas and then let them dry and then work on them a little bit more in order to build the color up to as dense as I want it. If I were to try to do that density all from the very beginning, it would be really hard to get that soft gradation that I have in the very far background. But then there's some places like with these leaves right here, I'm painting some distinct leaf shapes. And it's certainly fine to have distinct leaf shapes, but sometimes you want them to be a little softer. So I've got some just plain water on my brush right here, and I'm painting over one edge so that one edge falls into that soft background and the other one stays a hard edge. And it's gonna give it a little bit more life to it rather than just being graphical shapes on top of each other. 
and then in different places I'm just going to start adding in leaves as I see fit uh, add a little bit of a, a whole section of green this left side I was just kind of struggling with where I wanted it to be so I decided I wanted more color overall because notice how that white on the fox's chest starts to look more white as there's darker color beside it and then I'm trying to to make that left edge have a few more leaves to it but I don't want it to be completely solid so it'll be a matter of working back and forth with water and pigment to try to try to get the effect that I'm looking for and so I can either do that with water or by dabbing with a paper towel or a baby wipe that sort of thing to soften out some of that I'm just going to add some more green along here though before I start working back on that left area because I was liking how that that richer green on the left side I wanted to pull more of that to the right hand side and make them match a little bit better with each other and then create some some little leaves and greens on the, the right hand side and now I'm going to go back in with even darker colors to add some more leaves as well as you know some more details but the more layers I put in, I can get richer and richer color, but just not paint over the whole thing. I'm just painting less. I'm painting just the leaves or just some stems on the top with the darkest color. And that's going to give me that sense of dimension all the way to the back of the scene. And to be able to get both of those, those looks together. That really soft with a nice rich color with a, a little harder edge in the very front. So it's going to help to, to do both of those at the same time. So then I'll add a little bit of green down at the bottom because it now looked like he needed to sit on something, which was nice. So I'm pushing some of that, uh, that water in there to soften out that color. And then here we have the, the gray that I'm going to add so that I can create some fuzziness in his white areas. And again, being careful not to touch any of the, the reddish areas. Those are not going to ever be set. So I'm stopping short of that so that I have a little white halo around the edge of his chest there, which is kind of nice. For the finishing touches on my card, I die cut it with a stitched die from My Favorite Things. And then I've also popped it onto some dimensional adhesive and added glossy accents to my little flowers. So there you go. Really cute little stamp set from Honeybee Stamps. And I hope that you will use some of these techniques next time you pick up your watercolors and your zigs. Maybe combine them and use them for different effects on the same card because the different pro products have different properties. Take care, watch another video if you like, or click through to some of the supplies in the description, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.